This is the Atlas, and it serves as the core of the endgame for Path of Exile 2. It's infinite and expands in all directions. Now we are not going to spoil the plot too much here, but corruption from the beast has blighted the land and your objective is to help fight it. In the center of the atlas you will find the Ziggurat, a temple in which the Val research the fundamentals of space and time. Here we can open portals to nearby locations and begin cleansing corruption and finding resources. In order to power the portal device we will need waystones. Each waystone has a tear which will determine the level of the monsters that you will face. To go to an area, simply click one that is adjacent to an area that you have already completed. Insert the waystone and click Traverse. Portals will open, allowing you and your party to travel to the area you have selected. All the areas in the endgame feel distinct from the locations in the campaign, and we have dialed the randomization up to 11. The monster packs you will face in each map are totally random, and the combination of them can lead to some very interesting combat situations. There are over 400 monster types in Early Access, and they have a lot of varied and interesting abilities. Depending on which combinations you face, you might find some serious challenges. In order to cleanse the corruption from the area, you will need to defeat all the powerful rare and unique enemies in it. Once you have done that, the area will be marked as completed and you will be able to travel past it to progress deeper into the world. If you die, then the map can no longer be run and you will have to find another way around to get to the areas behind it. There are also all kinds of other random encounters you might run into as you play maps. One such encounter are Precursor Artifacts. These are ancient, corrupting monuments that irradiate the monsters around them. The monsters that feed off the corruption are drawn to their power. If you defeat the monsters and cleanse the artifact, you will get a powerful temporary buff. Some of the buffs make you faster, others rain lightning or fire around you, and some even give you increased experience or help you find better items. You can also find strong boxes. These enigmatic chests guard piles of treasure, but are always a trap. Monsters lie in wait to attack you the moment you open it, and the boxes often have mechanisms to unleash powerful spells or dangerous debuffs. There are different types of strong boxes containing different items, and you can even use your currency items to craft them on the fly so you can optimize the contents. But be careful of opening one you can't handle. Sometimes you'll discover monsters frozen in essences, solidified crystalline corruption. These dangerous monsters can be broken free. If you defeat them, the essence they drop can be used to upgrade normal items to magic items with a guaranteed mod from a category. For example, we could use this one on some boats to ensure a movement speed mod. Rarely, essences will also drop that allow you to upgrade magics to rares, adding the guaranteed mod. This is incredibly powerful since it allows you to get a second deterministic mod in your crafting projects. Combining these with the currencies that are commonly found at Rayclast for modifying items, and we can get a very nice pair of boots indeed. Waystones, like all items, can also be crafted using your currency items. Adding prefix mods will improve the rewards, while suffix mods increase danger. The more dangerous a map is, the more waystones will drop. Adding mods to your waystones is key to progressing to higher tiers and sustaining them, but it will require you to take on larger challenges. There are a variety of factors you have to consider when crafting your waystones. Some maps will have higher density, some lower, some have more magic and rare chests, or monsters, some are more linear, and others more open. Make sure you explore and think about what makes certain maps good if you want to maximize your returns. As you cleanse corruption from higher and higher tiers of the atlas, you will gain points that you can spend in the atlas tree. This tree allows you to juice the danger and rewards of all areas in the endgame. You could increase the number of monsters, the number of rares, the number of precursor artifacts or strong boxes, even the quantity of item drops. As you explore the endgame world map, you'll notice various different biomes from snow-capped mountains to dense jungle valleys. Most maps are restricted to certain biomes. As you continue to explore deeper into the atlas, there are all sorts of things to discover. These cities are constructed by different peoples of Rayclast and have specific items that can be found there. 
These strange structures marked on the map don't appear to do anything for now. Perhaps you'll work out how to use them later. You might find unique maps like Untainted Paradise, an undisturbed island full of beasts that give an extreme amount of experience. You may even find a lonely man just enjoying his retirement who will give you a unique item for free. In addition, you can find special areas that would make a good spot to set up camp. Clear these areas of their hostile inhabitants and you'll be able to claim them as your own hideout. You can decorate your hideout as you see fit and invite various NPCs to join you there to create your own personal base of operations. A great tool for exploration are towers. These mysterious precursor constructs are dotted around the atlas. Completing the tower will reveal a large area around it, allowing you to scout out your next challenge. There are lots of things to find, so keep looking. Some sections of your atlas are influenced by corruption. This adds extra modifiers to the maps in the region, increasing difficulty and rewards. Here, slaying monsters in close proximity to each other will cause the vestiges of corruption within them to merge together, forming powerful and grotesque abominations. You may have noticed while looking at the atlas that some of the areas have these icons above them. The icon indicates that the area contains some kind of special encounter. This icon indicates that the area has a powerful boss. Because only one in four maps contain a map boss, we are able to make them very powerful and very rewarding. These bosses come from the campaign, but have had their difficulty increased with changes to AI and some of their abilities. It's worth noting that because you can see where the bosses are, you can choose to take them on or avoid them. If you do choose to hunt bosses though, then you will be rewarded with special points for the boss hunting section of the Atlas skill tree. The points here will allow you to specialize in boss killing, giving you much greater rewards for defeating them. For each different type of content in the endgame, we are adding specialized trees in order to make it so you don't feel the need to respec your points when you change between different types of content. We will be showing you seven of these by the end of this presentation, so there is still a lot more to come. Bosses are not the only icon you will see on the Atlas. Let's take a look at one of the endgame systems, Breach. If you played PoE 1, you might be familiar with Breach. For PoE 2, we have created sequels to several PoE 1 leagues. While the mechanic is familiar, the monsters, bosses, rewards, and progression are all new. A Breach is a tear in the fabric of reality. Opening it will allow you to see the demons and otherworldly monstrosities that lie in wait on this other plane of existence. By engaging with a Breach, you'll create a bridge between their world and Rayclast. In order to keep the breach open, you will need to kill the demons that pour forth. The faster you can kill the monsters, the more monsters you will fight, and the more loot you will find. You can also find clasped hands that will open and drop more items if you run over them. These can be a good boost to the rewards of the breach, so keep an eye out. One of the rewards that you may find while fighting monsters from breach are tablets. Tablets are special items that can be used with Precursor Towers to add more encounters to the Atlas. Breaches will drop Breach Tablets. Clicking on a completed tower will allow you to consume the tablet to add more breaches to areas within range of the tower. This makes all the content in the Atlas self-sustaining. Want to do more breaches? Find the tablets, add them to your towers, get more breaches, getting more tablets. Soon your Atlas will be covered in otherworldly domains. In addition, like all items in PoE, you can craft them. Use your currency to add mods to your tablets, allowing you to upgrade all the breaches in range. Tablets can have up to two mods. These mods do things like adding extra rare monsters, extra clasped hands, or even monster density of breaches, allowing you to keep them open longer. Often, you will find multiple towers near to each other with overlapping areas of effect. This can allow you to rarely juice the mechanic by stacking the mods from multiple tablets. In your fight to hold the breach demons at bay, you may want to use the powers of their world against them. Each in-game mechanic always has player power that can only be gained from that mechanic, and Breach is no different. In Breach, you will find Catalysts, items that can increase the quality of rings and amulets by improving specific mobs. You can also find Breach Rings, a special base type that can have its quality improved by Catalysts up to 50%. In this case, you could create a ring with around 170 life. Breach rings can become some of the strongest rings in the game, giving you some good motivation to face the demon hordes. In addition, each endgame mechanic needs to have a pinnacle endgame encounter. While killing breach monsters, you may find breach splinters. Collect enough of these and you'll be able to create a breach stone. Using a vile technology called the Realm Gate, you can use your breach stone to access their domain and bring the fight to them. 
In this twisted domain, you will find nothing but a single massive breach. Triggering it will reveal hordes of breach inhabitants. And should you be fast enough, you will be able to fight their leader, Zesht. We that are one. We that dreamed. We in nightmare. We that are one. Fate belies This is just one of the pinnacle encounters of POE 2. We won't be showing the rest of them, so you will have to discover them for yourself. But rest assured, this is some of the hardest content we have ever made. All these encounters have specific uniques that can only be found from them, but that's not all. We still have the progression system. Defeating Zesht will give you points to allocate into the breach section of the Atlas Tree. Allocating these points will make breaches and the breach domain even harder, but will give you more rewards. The small nodes will increase the difficulty of the twisted domain, while the large nodes have more specific bonuses. For example, this node adds more clasped hands to your breaches, and adds a pack of magic monsters that can guard them. Get some more points and you can allocate Waking Nightmare which will double the number of splinters you get from clasped hands and inflict you with a mysterious debuff. In order to earn more points, you will need to defeat Zesht at a higher difficulty and some rewards from Zesht can only be found by increasing the difficulty of the Twisted Domain above certain thresholds. Defeating Zesht at difficulty 4 will be a challenge indeed, but there are many more threats in Rayclast. Ritual altars are sacrificial sites built by the mysterious King in the Mists. If you encounter this symbol on the atlas, then you know that the area contains ritual altars. Ritual altars demand tribute. Every monster you slaughter in the circle will feed the altar. After the sacrifice, touch it to begin the ritual. The monsters you just killed will be resurrected by the King of the Mist's dark magic, and you must fight to survive. The tribute you have offered to the altar can be spent to buy powerful items, but they can be expensive. To gain more tribute, you will want to find more altars. Each successive ritual you do within an area will spawn the monsters revived by the previous ones, in addition to the ones you sacrifice next to it. By the end of an area, you will be fighting a truly imposing number of foes, but will have a significant amount of tribute to spend. One of the rewards you can buy with tribute are omens. These are special items that allow for metacrafting. Crafting items that affect other crafting items. Have an item with good prefixes but bad suffixes? This omen will help you to remove the mod you don't want while keeping the ones you do. There are a bunch more of these with different effects, but we will leave them for you to discover. Now don't forget that Ritual will also drop tablets, which can be used to specialize into getting more Rituals. If you want to get to the pinnacle boss of Ritual, then you will probably want to use them. They can also be crafted to grant mods, making your Rituals more rewarding. The pinnacle encounter of Ritual is the King in the Mists. Feared by the Asmeri people, he is said to have brought eternal darkness to the Wildwood. We won't show the encounter, but just like Breach, there are a range of unique items you can get for defeating him, and you will gain points in the ritual section of the Atlas Tree. Some maps have been touched by insanity. A mysterious entity has taken a special interest in you. Step through the looking glass and you will find your nightmares coming to life. When you touch a mirror, the mists of delirium will spread out across the area, infecting your mind. You must stay within the mist to maintain the nightmare, which is as profitable as it is terrifying. Everything you kill will increase the rewards that drop. However, the deeper into the mist you travel, the stronger the monsters are. Be careful not to overstay your welcome. Rare and unique enemies will become vessels for terrifying demons, who will manifest out of them to unleash powerful attacks on you. The mist also offers a strange crafting material, distilled emotions. By combining these emotions, you are able to instill your amulet with a notable from the passive skill tree. This is like gaining an extra passive point for free, attached to your gear. They are also particularly great because you don't have to traverse the tree to get them, allowing you to get off-class bonuses that would normally be much harder to get. 
Distilled emotions can also be used to instill your endgame maps, applying Delirious to them and adding additional difficulty and rewards, allowing you to further juice your endgame maps. The tablets you can find from Delirium can be used to further improve it, increase pack size, make the fog dissipate slower, or improve your progress towards the pinnacle encounter of Delirium. Speaking of which, every now and then you will find Simulacrum Splinters. The mysterious entity will create strange encounters based on warped versions of your own memories. Monsters and simulacrums come in waves that get progressively more difficult. You will receive loot at the end of each wave, and you will have to make the decision to leave now or continue on, facing up against even tougher foes from the mist. The bosses you will face as you get deeper into a simulacrum are truly terrifying. If you can complete a simulacrum, you will gain points for the delirium section of the Atlas skill tree. Next up, we have Expedition. Occasionally while clearing corruption, you will encounter these Kalgurin settlers. The Kalgurins have discovered ancient burial sites with lost Verisium artifacts, and they want you to help dig them up with explosives. The Kalgurins have marked the locations where the relics can be found. Place explosives as best you can to dig up as many as possible. There is just one problem. Corruption has brought the corpses of their ancestors to life, so you might have to do a little cleanup before you can reclaim the artifacts. You can also find remnants, the destruction of which will further anger the restless dead. Each one you blow up will make the subsequent monsters more powerful, but also more rewarding. Danig, Rog, Tujin, and Gwenin will exchange the artifacts for useful items and runic magic. You can also find tablets to increase the number of expeditions and the rewards. This one increases the radius of explosives, while this one increases the number of remnants you will find. Eventually, you might discover a logbook. These are special maps full of buried treasure and relics. Essentially, one giant dig site. Here, you can create an extremely long chain of explosives and go through a very high number of remnants. But be careful. Many remnants have mods that can really brick your build, so you will probably want to avoid these ones. If you add too many remnants, you could easily make the encounter harder than you can handle. There are all sorts of interesting things buried under the ground in logbooks. You might find dripping caves and hidden pirate caches. But the most powerful encounter is Ulroth, the ancient undead commander of the Knights of the Sun. Defeating him will grant you unique rewards, as well as points to spend in the expedition section of the Atlas Tree. So those are the endgame systems on the Atlas, but we are not done yet. The trials we talked about earlier have much more content when you get to endgame 2. Just like the other endgame systems, they also have progression mechanics, unique rewards, and player power that can only be gained from them. As you get higher level coins for the trial of the Sycamores, you will unlock more floors to explore. Each floor has its own challenging rooms and a floor boss that you will need to kill. There are four floors in total, leading to another pinnacle boss at the end of the last floor, which can only be accessed at Enkin. The trial of the Sycamores is where you'll find jewels, which you can socket into your tree. These are like passives that you can craft with your currency items. They can be really powerful as they allow you to stack modifiers that may not be easily accessible on the tree normally. This jewel gives lightning damage and shock chance, for example. There are quite a few jewel sockets on the tree, so it's possible to gain a lot of power here. There are also other types of jewels that don't provide any bonuses themselves, but affect other passives surrounding them. This jewel increases the effect of small nodes and radius by 25%. With careful placement in the tree, you could get a significant amount of power from it. There are also unique jewels available with very interesting effects, but you will have to find those for yourself. In order to push further into the trial and uncover the secrets of the Marraketh, you will want to take advantage of its progression system, relics. Relics are items that can be placed in the relic altar as you start the trial. They give special bonuses that affect the trial, making it easier and increasing its rewards. Of course, you can craft these with your currency items, making them even stronger. If you can complete the entire trial overcoming all four floors, the final boss will reward you with one of many unique relics. These relics will be consumed when used on your next run, but can reward you with unique and powerful items. For example, this is the Last Flame. If you use it, you will have only one honor for the entire trial, so you will need to do a completely hitless run. 
The Trial of Chaos also extends into the endgame. As you gain inscribed ultimatums of higher and higher levels, the number of chambers that you can go through increases. In true Val style, this allows you to take even more risks for even more rewards. At endgame, you can progress through up to 10 chambers with three bosses on a single run. Stacking 10 tribulations on top of each other will make this a significant challenge, but it's worth it. The Trial Master will tempt you with items of the Val Empire, such as Val Orbs. Val Orbs are powerful crafting items that corrupt your gear with random, mysterious outcomes. Corruption prevents an item from being modified further, so it has to be the last step of your craft. But it's also the most impactful one. For example, if you use one on your body armor, it might add a new powerful enchantment, or it might re-roll up to half of its modifiers. Val Orbs also have the ability to add a socket, allowing you to bypass the normal restriction of how many sockets an item can have. A body armor could get up to three sockets this way, allowing for a significant number of mods. Val Orbs can even modify uniques. Adding enchantments or sockets to uniques can make them incredibly powerful, but there is a good chance that you will break them as well. The Trial Master will also occasionally offer you soul cores. Originally formed by Chaos, the Val sought to replicate soul cores through human sacrifice rituals and blood magic to power their civilization. Soul cores are powerful socketable items, with mods that cannot be obtained from regular runes. Like all endgame content, there is of course a pinnacle boss. The final chamber will drop keys to this mysterious door. Some say this is where the Trial Master himself resides. Perhaps you are willing to take the risk to find out. Had enough yet? Because there is still just one more thing. The most difficult content in Path of Exile 2. While mapping, you might come across this fortress that has emerged from underground, surrounded by an enormous maze riddled with danger. Is the maze preventing something from getting in? Or something getting out? This fortress is of ancient origin and its construction has similarities to the towers and tablets that you have been using on your journey through the endgame. It is clear from the entrance that there are three keys required to enter. Local factions are vying for access to the fortress in order to seize the power they believe will be inside. Each of the faction's leaders have managed to get their hands on one of the keys, so you will need to defeat them. Each faction is led by an uber act boss. You can see one of them inhabiting the city, but in order to fight him, you will first need to defeat their two lieutenants in the adjacent zones. Be careful, if you fail against either of the lieutenants, or to kill the leader, they will move on, and you will need to find them again. Kill all the uber bosses and you will gain access to the fortress. We aren't going to spoil it as we can't wait to see you guys attempt it for the first time. But is there a tree you get points in after killing it? Of course there is. This is Path of Exile. There is always another tree.